Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Professor Motama Dikane. I'm the Vice Principal for Teaching, Learning, Community Engagement, and Student Support. And I shall be presiding over this occasion of the Investor of South Africa, this inaugural lecture. Before we proceed, let me pay my respects to the following. Professor Puleng Lenkabula, Principal and Vice Chancellor of the Investor of South Africa. Professor Zet Nkosi, Deputy Executive Dean, College of Human Sciences. Our inaugurant, Professor Maruta, in the Department of Information Sciences in the College of Human Sciences. Our respondent, Prof Nwepe, School Director, School of Arts, College of Human Sciences. Members of uh, Prof's family in attendance here today, colleagues, friends, and members of the investor community, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. You're welcome, sit back and enjoy this lecture. Ladies and gentlemen, it is important for us to understand the context of an inaugural lecture. Inaugural lectures are actually a rite of passage in one's journey of scholarship. They are the culmination of many, many years of dedication and hard work. But of course, we all know no one hand can clap itself or with itself. It needs another hand. The same applies here. The support of family and the academic community always makes it possible for any scholar to achieve their greatest. And we've seen it in this journey. When we look at the, the, the essence of the lecture that is presented by Professor Maruta, we note something very close to our heart, the healthcare system of, in South Africa. He talks about the evolution of technology in the fourth industrial revolution, international classification of diseases. This is actually what I call the humanities not sleeping through the revolution. This is what is contained in the lecture that we're going to be hearing very soon. Ladies and gentlemen, without taking much time, I shall now invite Professor Zed Nkosi, Deputy Executive Dean of the College of Human Sciences to introduce the scholar. Prof Maruta shall then be duly followed by Professor Nwepe, who is the respondent. They will follow one another, Ganjalo, Ganjalo. Uh, Prof Nkosi, please come forward and introduce the scholar. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. May I acknowledge our Vice Chancellor and Principal of UNISA, Prof Lenkabule, our Vice Principal Teaching, Learning, Community Engagement, and Student Support, Prof Zodwa Mozama Tikane, the respondent, Prof Ngwepe, who is the School Director of the School of Arts and our inaugurant, Prof. N.S. Maruta. Prof. Nguako Solomon Maruta was born and bred at Khasikopo village in Limpompo province, near Zanin. He is the seventh of nine children of Mrs. Sekedi and the late Mr. Maruta. Prof. Maruta is currently blessed with a beautiful wife, Elizabeth, and five beautiful daughters. He completed his primary education at Mansa Primary School in 1987. He attended his secondary education at Motsedi High School up to Standard 9 and completed his Standard 10 at Kholakaleme. High school. Owing to financial difficulties to pursue studies after metric in 1995, he spent two years hustling with jobs for building constructions and training German shepherds, security dogs at Gauding. He graduated four years degree on Bachelor of Information Sciences in the year 2002 and Bachelor of Information Studies Honors in 2003 at the University of the North, now which is University of Limpompo. He graduated Master of Information Science degree in the year 2012 and Doctor of Literature and Philosophy 
in 2017 at the University of South Africa. Prof. Maruta worked as a librarian and information specialist at the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, Palma Development Group, Vail University of Technology, Monash University, and Limpombo Department of Sports, Arts, and Culture. He developed and implemented library programs for both Palma Development Group and Limpombo Department of Sports, Arts, and Culture in 2004 at Johannesburg and Polokwane, respectively. He also worked as a Deputy Director for Information and Record Management at Fort Drecker District Hospital, South African Social Security Agency, St. Rita's Regional Hospital, and Limpombo Provincial Department of Health. He developed and implemented information and records management program at Fort Drecker Hospital from 2005 to 2008, and enhanced SASA Beneficiary Maintenance Record Management program at Bloemfontein, Free State Region from 2008 to 2011. He joined UNISA as a senior lecturer in September 2017 to become a full professor in May 2021. Over the past five years, Prof. Maruta has published more than 20 articles in accredited national and international journals with more than 15 listed in Scopus and four book chapters in accredited international publications. He is currently finalizing another authored book which is under production. He collaborated with four other international scholars in IGI Global Publishers. He also supervised two masters and two PhD students to completion within record time in the, pa in the past five years. He is currently supervising 20 master students and PhD research projects. He has been a regular reviewer for several journals including Biomedical and Pharmacologic Journal, Information Development, Journal of South African Society of Archivists, Mosa Ion, Eza Bika, Journal Global Knowledge, Memory, and Communication, Sage Open, BMC, Medical Information, Informatics and Decision Making, Records Management Journal, Archives and Manuscripts, Collection and Curation, Archives and Records, Health and Technology, IGI Global Book Chapters, to list only the few. He has also been an external examiner for several institutions of higher education, including Durban University of Technology, University of Forte, University of Limpombo, and University of KwaZulu-Natal and the University of Cape Town. Prof. Maruta is currently elected to serve as an executive member of the International Council of Archives Section on University and Research Institution Archives. He represents UNISA Information Science on the International Council of Archives Institutional Membership. He is attached to three sections of ICA as a regular member. That is the section on university and research institution archives. He is responsible for section for archival education and training and general assembly. Prof. Maruta is also a national executive committee member for the South African Society of Archivists. He served as an editor in chief for the Journal of the South African Society of Archivists, to which he has been a deputy director from 2018 to 2021. He is also a review editor for the journal Frontiers in Research Metrics and Analytics. He has presented several national and international conference papers. Prof. Maruta is currently teaching archival principles and practice. At honors level, he's teaching research in archives 
and records management, information and knowledge governance. His research interests include knowledge archives and record management, especially with respect to patient and hospital records, electronic records, cloud computing, blockchain technology, enterprise content management, big data management, and police case records, security, library management, and marketing, and open distance electronic learning. Prof. Maruta serves as a departmental chair for the Research and Innovation Committee at UNISA and serves on the University Senate Committee, the College Research and Innovation Committee, the Departmental Higher Degrees Committee, the Departmental Masters and Doctorate Committee, the Departmental Community Engagement Committee, and the Departmental Executive Management Committee. He also serves in the university storytelling project since 2018. The purpose of the project is to develop language, storytelling, and reading skills for the basic education learners, which also produce books with learner stories published on their names, adding to research articles published by project members. In 2003, he initiated a library project at Sikhopo village, which resulted in municipality erecting community library building for the community. May we give Prof. Maruta the round of applause for his excellent work that he's doing. Prof. Maruta, please come forward to share your inaugural lecture. Titled, Moving Patients Q to the cloud for quality healthcare in South Africa using fourth industrial revolution technology. Over to you, Prof. Maruta, and all the best. Thank you very much. Yeah, Program Director, Vice Chancellor and Principal, Prof. Linkabula, in the entire university executive management, College of Human Science Management, Director of School of Arts, Prof. Nguepe, who is my respondent. I greet you all, and all protocols are observed. Uh, before I continue, I want to acknowledge the following people who contributed much uh, to my journey, uh, academic journey, starting with my family, my mother, Ms. Kelly Mamarbe Maruta, my wife, Elizabeth, daughters, Makwena, Naledi, Kokejo, Mujaji, Mapula, and my granddaughter, Kamuhelo, and uh, the entire colleagues in the Department of Information Science. Thank you for being a pillar of my strength throughout the academic journey. My topic today is uh, about moving patients queue to the cloud for quality health care in South Africa using the fourth industrial revolution technology. Uh, my presentation or the lecture will cover the introduction, synopsis of uh, healthcare system in South Africa, evolution of technology in the fourth industrial revolution, enabling technologies in the four, four IR, artificial intelligence in the fourth industrial revolution, integration of ICD coding to address uh, system user literacy, uh, discussion of the envisaged for IR technology for moving patients queue to the cloud, and then I'll finish with the concluding remarks. In my introduction, I want to highlight, start by highlighting that uh, the study investigated the provision of quality patient care in South Africa using the 4IR technology. Technology has evolved uh, supersonically during the past few decades. And today we are in the fourth industrial revolution where most tasks are discharged visually using computers on the network. Uh, to quote uh, Bialwa 2020, increased adoption of emerging technologies such as Internet of Things, blockchain, big data, uh, behavioral or predictive analysis or analytics, artificial intelligence and many more stands to revolutionize the way government departments do their business 
and this should not be exclusive to government department of health in South Africa. Technology is introduced in the public service uh, to ensure business processes efficiency in government is improved for delivery of public service uh, in, in such a manner that is effective. To show that technology has uh, evolved uh, exponentially during the past few decades, around 1949, computer technologies were only able to take user command and discharge them, and, they, and were not able to recall those commands or transactions in the future during the following or related or similar or different transactions executed during uh, different or uh, the same users. Uh, they could, for instance, keep an audit trail, but could not act on it in the future transactions. Artificial intelligence saw a paradigm shift in the 1980s when the algorithm toolkits was expanded with more funds dedicated to its ICT projects. This led to computer experts coming up with uh, different concepts for programming and uh, enhancing artificial intelligence. For instance, uh, John came up with the deep concept of deep learning, uh, which has to do with uh, programming computers to learn from their experience of the previous use. And Edward also came up with the, uh, the concept of expert system uh, to program computers to imitate decision making in human. Innovative technology has been used by suppliers and producers of different kinds of uh, goods and services to improve their services to clients. The paradigm of the fourth industrial revolution challenges organization to rethink their mode of operation in relation to globalization and innovation. To give few examples, uh, grocery shops like, such as Checkers and uh, Pick and Pay, as well as uh, restaurants like uh, KFC, McDonald's, uh, Nando's, and I can na only name few. They started uh, using uh, technology to enhance their services to their clients. Healthcare services are different, but applying the current technology to this sector may assist in improving the quality of healthcare service to patients by reducing waiting time, overcrowding in the facilities, and the transfer of infections among patients. And uh, more importantly, missing of medical and healthcare history information during treatment. Looking at the synopsis of healthcare systems in South Africa, there are many operational challenges in different industries that four IR technologies may solve. Giving, to give an example, in the year 2015, countries across the world failed to achieve the targets of uh, the Millennium De Development Goals by the set deadline. This might be because of the kind of technology which was applied or used during the, the, the times or era. Ultimately, the Millennium Development Goals were transformed into Sustainable Development Goals. In both plans, you will agree with me that uh, most of the goals were about resolving health-related issues such as uh, maternal health, child mortality, HIV, AIDS, malaria, and many more. Looking at the South African context uh, further, Sipalane et al. 2020 state that for post-1994 in South Africa, challenges of streamlining the provision of public service such as health, education, water, and housing, among other key government services, are palpable. The government at both national and sub-national sub levels is expected to enhance the quality of life for those South Africans who were 
deprived of their dignity and fundamental human rights during the apartheid era. However, there is an increase in the need for the government to attempt and reform in the 21st century using technologies available such as the 4IR to face the current reality. For example, the platforms such as uh, bots and robot, robot advisors may be integrated to enable access to information to happen at any time and any place where business happens with uh, the use of blockchain on the distributed ledger and uh, smart contracts. South Africa is one of the 54 countries in the African continent located in the southern part of the, the continent. Uh, the, the country is uh, structured into national, provincial and local government. And uh, it is also sub further categorized into nine provinces with each province subdivided or categorized into uh, districts. And each district is uh, subdivided further into sub uh, districts called municipalities. At every level of government, there is a department dealing with healthcare service. The provincial government renders healthcare service uh, through diverse facilities. Uh, this uh, diversity includes clinics, health centers, district hospitals, regional hospitals, tertiary or academic hospitals, as well as central hospitals. Each of the service level facility is bigger than the previous or the lower, uh, with more facilities, technologies, equipments, and specialists, specialists. And the intention or the reason for this is uh, to save costs and also to make sure that uh, uh, patients receive uh, healthcare service required with ease. One key issue that uh, compromises quality patient's care in the is the lack of collaboration among healthcare facilities. And this is something which the 4IR technology may redress if implemented properly. Currently, with the healthcare distributed across so many levels, patient's health care history is not shared. This means that when patients uh, visit different healthcare facilities, Clinicians are not able to access their information created at the other facilities where the patients may have been treated in the previous days or years. Collaboration is very important against the backdrop of the current explosive uh, population growth as a result of uh, immigration and high birth rate in the country. Uh, to quote Cantiello, uh, at all 2016. Decision making in the healthcare industry among clinicians and managers requires an awareness of the ever changing landscape of healthcare in order to ensure quality care and services to patients. Healthcare institutions need to share patients and their medi medical and healthcare history to avoid working in silos or they're supposed to avoid working in silos. Uh, cooperation among healthcare facilities may involve sharing many things. And uh, to give a few examples, th this may include uh, the system, the law governing their operation and patient's information. And this is only to list few. Current technology makes it possible for healthcare facilities uh, to collaborate among Many, uh, for many things, including sharing cloud storage and providing visual healthcare facilities or services. Technology has overcome the problem of distance in the collaboration among healthcare facilities to provide healthcare service uh, to all. The South African healthcare service is challenged with a long patient waiting time high overcrowding in different healthcare facilities at different structural levels, and uh, more critically, missing patients' records. 
This may result in some patients losing their lives or experiencing complications from illnesses uh, they are experiencing. And they are next of kin ending up uh, suing the healthcare facilities or the department across the, province, the, the, the country. However, the fourth industrial revolution has come up with the enhanced technologies to render service delivery with ease and efficiency to achieve high productivity and quality. Evolution of technology in the fourth industrial revolution. The fourth industrial revolution was initiated or developed uh, in Germany by around 2013 and it started uh, spanning this globe as a new work model focused on the integrated man-machine approach for production that is sustainable. The 4IR is about the integration of tools already used in the past. Uh, giving examples, uh, big data, cloud, robots, 3D printing, and many more that are now connected into a global network by transmitting digital data. In the 4IR, cyber physical systems are used to integrate human and machine skills to achieve a smart factory te uh, technology to manage and control the personalized products value chain to achieve customer satisfaction. Uh, this is done with the use of digit digitization for main technology interconnection. The focus of the 4IR, or the 4th Industrial Revolution Technology, was to transform the traditional mode of operation in the industries from the old-fashioned approach to work to modern and integrated production technologies with the new machinery, materials, and inputs. In the industrial processes, the 4th Industrial Revolution played an important disruptive role uh, by bringing about important improvements in the world economy and society at large. The 4IR is made up of smart system to deal with uh, automation, digitization, and information technology. According to Petrillo et al., 2017, the world has been in the fifth industrial revolution since the year 2020, when people and organizations started focusing on collaboration in the application of technology introduced throughout the previous Industrial Revolution. That is up to the fourth Industrial Revolution, starting from the first. Uh, here I am trying to illustrate uh, evolution of technology in the fourth Industrial Revolution. Uh, the first industrial revolution started by the end of 18th century with the introduction of water and steam power. Well, the second industrial revolution uh, started by the beginning of the 20th century with the introduction of industrial mass production. The third uh, industrial revolution started by the beginning of the 21st century with uh, the realization of the industrial automation and robotics. Well, the 4IR started around 2013 with the introduction of digital processes in the industry. And by the year 2020, coming to the current, we realized the fifth industrial revolution with the introduction of co-working or collaboration of organizations and individuals. Looking at uh, these different industrial revolutions, uh, it is clear that uh, changes from time to time are about improvements in, the, in technology to enable organizations across the world to improve their production processes in terms of quality, quantity, and the time spent on production uh, in rendering their services or uh, producing their project product. Uh, these improvements also bring about uh, the flexibility and increased production. The fifth industrial revolution gives rise to many opportunities, flexibility and efficiency in industrial production. This uh, striving to provide the industry with intelligent 
network result in the merging of the real world and visual world in cyber physical system. Cyber physical systems come when IT systems and mechanical and electronic components are merged together on an online network to enable communication across different machines imitating social network communication. Enabling technologies for the fourth industrial revolution. The fourth industrial revolution is uh, technology is made up of uh, technologies such as artificial intelligence, uh, blockchain technology, advanced robotics, internet of things, big data, 5G, uh, augmented reality, integration, simulation, cloud, addictive manufacturing, as well as cyber security. Big data is a technology used for collection, processing, and analysis of a large amount of structured and unstructured data. Well, on the other side, cloud computing has to do with uh, the use of open system to manage large amount of data. It renders data accessible anywhere and anytime, allowing flexible production and communication. On the other side, cyber security ensures the security of data during collection, capturing, processing, analysis, and sharing throughout the system and network. And uh, automated robo robots are programmed machines which are used to discharge heavy and difficult as well as tiring jobs to relieve uh, human beings. Well, addictive manufacturing, also known as the 3D printing, is used for construction of prototype of a complete product usually uh, for personalized product. Augmented reality bring about visual reality system to replace current manual modus operandi or mode of operation. Well, on the other side, horizontal and uh, vertical integration is about integration or interconnection of computer technologies across different organizations scattered in different locations for operators to share information. Well, simula simulation software is used for business uh, systems and manufacturing processes simulation, providing timely analysis of system inputs and outputs. Artificial intelligence is a simulation of human intelligent processes by machine, especially computer systems. Well, 5G uh, stand for fifth generation mobile network that is designed in a manner to connect anyone and everything such as devices, uh, machine and other objects. A blockchain on the other side is a shared immutable ledger that facilitates the process of recording transactions and tracking assets in a business network. The, in every system, as you know, you will know there are key challenges, especially for developing countries. But in this regard, the challenges include training of uh, operators, scalability, collaboration with other companies, and funding. Nevertheless, technology holds many benefits for organizations, including but not limited to improved productivity in terms of quality and quantity of production in production. And it also helped to minimize uh, waste and in, uh, help also to grow the economy. And consistency in the production and uh, consumption can also be realized with the introduction of technology. Artificial intelligence in the fourth industrial revolution. The current age of technology is named the fourth in industrial revolution because most of the tasks that were expected to be discharged by human beings in the past are being done by computer-assisted machines, and that is what we call the artificial intelligence. This includes service rendered in different industries or fields, especially uh, in the private sector and parastatals, in the field of education, engineering, and finance, but this is only to list few. 
So artificial intelligence uh, is any human-like behavior displayed by a machine or a system. In artificial intelligence most basic form, computers are programmed to mimic human behavior using extensive data from the past, examples of the similar behavior. So quoting from Hewlett Packard 2022, artificial intelligence can be a very powerful tool for both large corporations generating significant data and small organizations that uh, need to process their calls with uh, customers more effectively. Artificial intelligence can, streamli can streamline business processes, complete tasks uh, faster, eliminate human error, and many more. Artificial intelligent technology include automatic speech recognition, natural language processing, visual recognition, text recognition, big data, expert systems, robotics, machine learning, deep learning, as well as the cognitive intelligence. Automatic speech recognition is used to store or process the voice of the user delivered through the microphone, identifying the words of the system user and even converting voice or to text. Well, on the other side, natural language processing deals with linguistic, mostly to gain a clear understanding of the meaning of the user in, the, in their statements delivered via voice or text, and to realize user expectations conveyed by command, statement, or even uh, questions. It relies on understanding the sound and written data message exchanged between the human and the computer. Visual recognition deals with the recognition or understanding of uh, video signals and or image by recognizing different elements in them such as patterns and shapes. Well, on the other side, text recognition in turn uses optical character recognition tools to understand characters in the text, particularly text in an image format, and it functions as part of visual recognition. Big data has to do with uh, generation of large amount of data normally throughout the transaction or interactions between machine and human, which eventually need to be managed and accessed as required for business continuity. Normally data is uh, produced in a structured or an unstructured form. Expert system on the other side serve to generate complete collection of human knowledge on specific topics or issues. Robotics involve software for a wide range of devices that often relieve humans of repetitive or dangerous tasks. Machine learning is part of artificial intelligence that leads to computer system learning and relating to information like a human being by using algorithms to detect patterns in data provided previously to help with uh, predictions and the identification of new trends uh, for the future. Deep learning uh, going further is part of uh, machine learning and was developed based on the functioning of the human neural network in the brain when processing information. It also relies on previous experience of the data processed or received to come to conclusion or achieve accuracy. Uh, cognitive intelligence is built from combination of all the other technologies already presented above, such as visual recognition, machine learning, and many others. Well, there are different categories of artificial intelligence technologies based on uh, specific needs as uh, constructed by Organtic 2021. Uh, they first is, they came up with uh, four categories of uh, artificial intelligence technologies. The first one is the system that think like a human. The other one is the system that act like a human. 
Well, the third one is the system that think rationally. Well, the last one, the system that act rationally. So it's all about acting and thinking. And then they also came up with the two main categories of uh, artificial intelligent technologies. Um, the first one is a weak or narrow artificial intelligent technology. The weak and narrow artificial intelligent technology is more focused on specific sets of issues and may not act beyond tasks without uh, being programmed further. Well, the other category or the second category is the strong or general artificial intelligent uh, technology, which goes beyond human intelligent capa capability in terms of reasoning and deduction. In order to achieve intellectual automation, organization must be able to achieve application for machine to machine, predictive analytics, machine and systems, learning from recurring data traits, analysis, machine and systems, big data analytics, and machine and system following business rules and uh, policies for informed decisions in automatic activities according to Biala 2020. Integration of uh, the international classification of diseases coding to address uh, system user literacy the infusion of uh, the international classification of disease coding into artificial intelligent technology may assist the healthcare fraternity to curb literacy among patients as uh, system users. The ICD coding is a systematic classification of diseases uh, from general to specific. Uh, for those uh, from the library background, it is uh, just like uh, the daily decimal classification of book for books in the library, but in this case, we're talking about diseases. So the ICD uh, is used for many different healthcare purposes, including systematic recording analysis, interpretation and comparison of mortality and morbidity data collected in different countries or regions and at different times. Healthcare institutions have been using version 10 of the ICD coding for many years and now with the, the arrival of the coronavirus, uh, version 11 was created according to the World Health Organization 2022. Classified illnesses may be integrated into a visual system making it possible uh, for patients to choose the name of the disease relating to their problem. With the ICD-10 coding or ICD coding, artificial intelligent technology system may offer more alternative to users, such as the use of voice or text by either speaking to the system or typing text, or even choosing options from drop-down list. And uh, smartphones and computer technologies or applications may uh, be user friendly for the sake of the system in the 4IR, using the 4IR technology. Discussion of the four, the envisaged fourth industrial revolution technology to move patients cure to the cloud for quality health care in South Africa. In implementing the fourth industrial revolution technology, uh, organization uh, may not need to start uh, developing their system from scratch, uh, I mean, looking at the specifications. But instead, they may just convert their current mode of operation or manual way of operation into electronic. They simply convert the existing manual uh, 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 workflow into the electronic way or computer machine related. Consideration during the development must also be given to record uh, preservation strategies to ensure that uh, the system is sustainable going forward and to ensure also ensure that uh, record with enduring value uh, are safe and kept uh, as long as they are required or needed. In planning the system, the department may need to establish a task team uh, 
comprising of different professionals uh, who, are affect, who will be affected by the system, including pharmacists, uh, clinicians, ICT specialists, as well as records and information management professionals. This will assist in closing the gaps in functionalities of the system in all sp spheres of operation. Uh, record appraisal and retention may also need to be embedded uh, right away during the uh, system development to ensure that uh, records are kept safe uh, right away from the beginning of the system going forward. Yeah, a framework for moving patients cure to the cloud using the fourth industrial revolution technology to ensure quality health care in South Africa. Um, I tried to come up with a framework that can guide the implementers with regard to uh, the envisaged system that uh, may be functional uh, created from the fourth industrial revolution. In developing the system, uh, organization may need to focus on the requirements from the legislations, policies and procedures, and some policies may also be reviewed to focus on the new way of working or a new mode of operation based on the new system. Well, developing the system specification, uh, the planning need to be done, and the system need to be tested upon implementation and uh, monitoring and evaluation should be done as the system is uh, unrolled or, or in unfolding. And uh, should there be some uh, shortfalls identified, enhancements may be done during the evaluation of the system. So it is um, expected that the system should allow patients to asset lines to register first uh, using their uh, credentials or personal details. And the system should be connected with the home affairs system so that it can validate the identification numbers of the patients as they register. And uh, once the, the patients are registered, uh, they must be able to log in using their credentials to start using the consulting services. And uh, during the consultation, patients must be able to take their vital signs using the embedded scans, uh, which are working simply th as simple as the way uh, smartwatch are working. Because nowadays, I think we are able to take our vitals with the smartwatch, your high blood pressure, and many other things. And uh, patient must be able to Remember, we are having a lot of patients with different literacy levels. So a patient must be able to consult using their voice, using text, and also using the drop-down menu, depending on their literacy level or their understanding. And uh, upon consultation, patients must be able to receive uh, feedback from the system about a uh, problem that com was communicated to the system. And uh, the system must also be able to uh, give patients prescription in case their uh, health situation does not require them to visit the healthcare facility. But in case the healthcare facility, I mean, the, the problem requires uh, the patient to visit the healthcare facility, the system must be able to recommend a uh, patient to consult, especially if the kind of uh, problem that a patient is uh, submitting require physical uh, assessment or a specialist at the healthcare facility level. And the healthcare facility, uh, the system must be able to identify the, the relevant level of the healthcare, whether the hospital clinic or uh, central hospital or even uh, district hospital, depending on the problem, the facilities available at different levels. So in case the, 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 the system decides to uh, give a patient's prescription, a patient must be able to uh, order medications online uh, for delivery or whether for collection at any preferred uh, pharmacy of their choice or healthcare facility uh, in government uh, institutions. And the system must be able to allow or have functionality for electronic signature for the users. 
so that it can be validated uh, that the right person is using the system. Um, like I said, the system must be able to give, give reference or give referral of patients to the healthcare facility depending on their illness. And the system finally must be able to provide a bill or do billing for the patient so that patient can also be able to pay for their consultation and medication online. And uh, the system finally must be able to keep the audit trail and reports so that uh, information can be accessed at the facility or the responsible uh, bodies. So the system generally must be able to keep record and control access to such records to ensure that records are accessed by only relevant and authorized uh, people. In conclusion, it is fortunate that with 4IR technology, information will start out digital and be managed throughout the same technology and throughout the life cycle of the record. That will include the storage, the preservation, access control and control, classification, distribution, usage, termination, and many other activities of managing information. And during uh, this co collaboration, data and information may be shared on the cloud by all stakeholders involved across the country so that patients may, be, may receive optimal treatment. It is hoped that uh, the system will enhance the quality of patient care because the health care delivery delivered to each patient will be thoroughly planned in advance a few days before the patient is a uh, visit. With proper planning, patients overcrowding and long waiting time for healthcare service may be reduced or completely eradicated in, the, in that manner. And with reduced crowding, with, uh, with reduced overcrowding in the healthcare facilities, uh, we will be able to reduce the risk of patients transferring or sharing infections or illnesses across different facilities uh, because overcrowding will be no longer will be things of the past. Finally, the patient may have uh, to spend very little time in the healthcare facilities. To ensure the success of the system, everyone using it will need to be trained or uh, their roles and responsibilities with the due consideration of legislation, policies and procedures. Patient may access embedded training on the system before use and video and video or text uh, training may be provided through a system online. And uh, more importantly, the, because the system will be keeping record about uh, patients consulted visually who never visited the healthcare facility, the healthcare professionals may be able to also contact uh, certain peoples with certain kind of illnesses based on uh, the weight or uh, the, the strength of such illnesses to check whether the treatment is, uh, is treating them well or not. And they may reach out to the patients in case there is a need. Thank you for listening. Uh, that is the end of my presentation. And kia levo wa tovela. Madam Vice-Chancellor, Professor Lengabula, the entire university management, the management of the College of Human Sciences, the guest of honor, Professor Nwaku Konokono Maruta, Muilaletlaka Mezea Pula, the big crocodile. He is big indeed. Family members of Professor Maruta, colleagues and cousins, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Let me be one of the first few to congratulate Professor Maruta on the achievement of the milestone of joining the professorate in pursuit of academic jamboree and the production of new knowledge. I am both humbled and elevated by the honor and privilege granted to me to respond to this virtual inaugural lecture by Professor Maruta titled 
moving patients queue to the cloud for quality healthcare in South Africa using 4IR revolution technology. Health and Records is Professor Maruta's niche area within archives and records management field, and he has published a lot in this niche area. Hence, even in some circle, people refer to him as the professor of frameworks. Indeed, when I saw the topic, I was a bit worried that if the patient joined the queue in the cloud, won't they get wet if the clouds melt? As well, I was asking myself, how will they get to the cloud? As Professor Maruta presented his inaugural lecture, I began to relax as he was talking about one of the disruptive technologies that drive the 4IR, which is a cloud computing. His presentation is addressing one of the grand societal problems or the so-called weird problems that is experienced in South Africa. The problem relates to long queues in hospitals, which results in poor services as well as systems that are not talking to each other in hospitals. For example, a patient who consults in Limpopo will have to open a file if they consult in any other province or private facilities. Currently, with the health care distributed across so many levels, patients' health care history is not shared. And this is uh, what Professor Maruta is worried about as he reflected in his uh, presentation. This is because the country is categorized into national, provincial, and local governments within nine provinces, with each province divided into district. Each dis district is then subdivided into local government municipalities. At e every level of government, there is a department dealing with the health care services. And the systems, according to Maruta, of these uh, uh, facilities are not talking to each other. So Prof. Maruta is further worried that as patients queue and spend the whole day in the hospi uh, hospitals for services, they risk transferring more illnesses or infections to each other. So he is suggesting that one of the disruptive technologies, which is a cloud computing, can be used to improve the quality of patient care using means such as visual patient consulting system to avoid patient overcrowding and a long waiting time for services in healthcare facilities. Prof. Maruta is of the view that uh, the 4IR disruptive technology may be able to assist in resolving these uh, challenges, but only with the cooperation of uh, the consent facilities. Personally, I think the topic of the lecture is uh, relevant as it comes at a time when the archival profession faces many challenges and the country itself it is unable to deal with uh, grand societal problems. So if we are failing to address the issues facing archives in relation to health, we are highly unlikely to contribute to so solution to grand societal problems as archivists. And archivists would continue to be viewed as unimportant being belonging to unimportant spaces working with unimportant material. So the advancement of ICT has brought a lot of changes, not only on the archival profession, but also on the roles and expectation of archivists and records managers. Therefore, as Prof. Maruta is suggesting, we need to move with the changes of time. He argued that technology has evolved exponentially during the past few decades. And this was compounded by the COVID-19 pandemic that coagulated the world from December 2019. This is uh, the reason why so many services can be rendered virtually online nowadays. And uh, Prof. Maruta is admitting that while private sector embraces that many more render online service to client services using the current technology, but the, the public sector it is not uh, following the suit. It is important that the public health sector is also disrupting the situation so that it is able to move the patient's queue to the cloud. Disruption, we all know, is all about an event, activity, or process causing a disturbance or a problem. It is all in our minds nowadays, within and outside the archival profession, and it can also be seen as a threat running through Professor Maruta's presentation. And it affects the work of archivists and our thinking about archives and records and how this intersects with the new role of archivists these disruptions arise from the 
ubiquitous and rapidly changing technology of records creation, communication, distribution, and storage, specifically the affordance of the fourth industrial revolution compounded by the covidulation of the world by the coronavirus. So we should know that the disruption, these disruptions are not new. They have been with us since a uh, time immemorial. Hence, uh, uh, Prof. Maruta has also alluded to it that it uh, started in the 1950s. So digital technology have changed the way we communicate, allowing near instant communication across international and national boundaries, and not just communication like the telephone, but recorded uh, communication as everything we do with our digital devices leaves a trace. This is the disruptions and disruption creates tension and tension demands control. And control is exercised through legislation, policy, procedures, and code of ethics. And our code of ethics are necessary as part of our professional identity. But are they sufficient in 2022 to meet new so social and technological challenges? As uh, Prof. Maruta is suggesting that we move the queue to the cloud. For records stored in a foreign cloud, how is the situation of jurisdiction or territoriality addressed? Ladies and gentlemen, as I introduce a conclusion before the conclusion, this lecture by Prof. Maruta offers us an opportunity to reflect as we are in the global periphery, but in the hub of that periphery, as we can hear the don chorus of the 4IR, and we know that there is a periphery in every hub, and a hub in every periphery. And in the conclusion, before the conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, even though we are in the global periphery, in South Africa, we are in the hub, because we can hear the prophets of doom as the clouds float weightlessly in the sky, forecasters making prophets of gloom from cloudy forecast to the clear sky, giving the hint of the rain in the air, acid rain clouds gather, Birds of the sky hover in the air. With these uh, technologies, perhaps archivists, as suggested by Prof. Maruta, should position themselves at the beginning of the record life cycle, taking the role of designated trusted custodian and work with all stakeholders and competent professionals, creators of record, IT and law specialists, so that we are able to move the queue to the cloud. Finally, as Professor Maruta has proposed a framework, I hope it will enable the public sector to move the patient's queue to the cloud while they cover themselves with an umbrella. I challenge Professor Maruta to make sure that this becomes a reality by helping with the implementation in the public health sector. Once again, congratulations on your achievement. Prof. Maruta, you have gained wisdom. I thank you. It is a job well done indeed. Congratulations again, Prof. Maruta, for the work that you have done. Again, I emphasize and offer my warmest congratulations to you on your academic su success. On behalf of the University and the Galaxy of Scholars, I wish to say to you, welcome aboard the Community of Scholars, Prof. Congratulations for attaining this very high level of your career. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to bring this event to a close. And on behalf of the Principal and Vice Chancellor of the University of South Africa, I bring the event to a close and I wish Prof. Maruta the, all, the best and all the best with the journey of research as an academic. Good night to you all. Nihambegahle. Siabong.